Good evening, everybody. Welcome to The Living Room. I am Dan Foster, and this is... I'm Tracy Foster, and welcome, everyone. It's great to have you here tonight um, on Tuesday night. We are excited to be here on the YouTube channel. We're so excited to start this journey on the YouTube channel. So if you would just hit that subscribe button and ring the bell and so that you can be notified whenever we have a new a new segment that comes up. Ring our episode. Ring our bell. Yeah. Ring our <laughs> bell. Yeah. I'm excited to talk about what we're going to talk about tonight because I think this has, we have like a couple of, of perspectives. Yeah, we get into some real deep discussion <laughs> because Tracy and I are both thinkers. Actually, I'm not really, I'm just kind of a, you know, this is, this is the way it is. And Tracy's like, yeah, but you know, what about, <laughs> so she kind of helps me, you know, dig a little bit deeper. She kind of helps me keep me, uh, keeps me a little bit more firm on my foundation, right? Right. So, uh, if you are joining us and you have your Bible and you want to look with us tonight, we're going to be talking out of Romans chapter 8. And um, the title of our YouTube video tonight is, Why Do Good Things Happen to Bad People? You've always heard, and I want to get that right because it's so easy to say, why do bad things happen to good people? And we hear that a lot, you know, and there's even a book written about, I think I even have it somewhere, why do bad things happen to good people? And people wonder, you know, I'm a Christian and, you know, I've had family that's, that's died or, you know, I've been affected by cancer or, you know, all these, these things happen and, and all I want to do is love God and I want to, you know, I go to church and I do seem like I do all the right things. And, um, but we're going to turn it around and say, you know, why do good things happen to seemingly bad people? And if we can, if we can really just take it a step further, we can say, you know, are any of us really good? You know, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So I would say that we're kind of in that bad, that bad mode. I mean, we are not good. We are by nature, we are not good. We are bad. We are all sinners saved by grace, right? right. We make we all that have choice to. to be saved. But we're all we're all the same. You know, we we've all sinned, right? And we, we all, all need a... the redeeming grace of the, and redemption of Jesus Christ. So it's not that we're saying, um, you know, that we're perfect or that we're good. Uh, and it is it is a good thing to ask because, you know, it seems like you do all the right things. You say all the right things and these horrible things happen. You know, and the Bible also says that it rains on the just and the unjust. Right? So not any one of us are, you know... Um, less inclined to bad things than others, right? The the rain storm and the storms fall on us all. You know, so we all have bad days, we all have good days. You know, people who are uh, those who do evil or you think, you know, just bad. And I know we've got people out there that are just villains, you know, in our lives and we just think, man, I just wish that person would get it. But you know, I, I'm always convicted whenever I, I feel that way because as bad as I think that that person is, I know that Jesus loves them. Right. I know that Jesus cares for them and that he wants to see them come to a saving knowledge of him. And that's what we're talking about tonight in Romans chapter 8. Right, and I do think that God gives each one of us a certain amount of, I mean, he does on the earth, but he gives us a certain, he runs after people, each person he runs after to, you know, just like, just like Satan runs after people as well, but he also runs after because he created every being and everything. And so I just feel like, you know, God, like you said, he doesn't want anyone to go to hell. He doesn't want anyone to perish. And I do think that he runs after everyone until, and probably gives them more than enough chances, <laughs> probably more than they deserve or I deserve to turn a segment of their life around. You know, if they go down a wrong path, turn it around or, you know what I'm saying? I'd, I, and 
And that is up to people to, like you had said, it's up to people to choose. We're all rooting for a hero, right? Right. And I, and I think about this uh, also, like with the Avenger movies and stuff like that, that they've, we've had the heroes. And then, or like in the DC comics, you know, when some of our heroes became dark or they became villainous and they were bad or they were perceived as bad and we're like, that can't be right, that can't be true. You know, and, and you feel this overwhelming angst because it's like, that's my hero, Superman's my hero, he's not bad. Or Batman's right. good, he's not bad. Or, you know, like um, uh, Yogi in, you, is, that, is that Yogi in, uh, um, oh, Thor. Yogi oh, and yeah. Thor, you know, he he would always, you would always see him, you know, He'd go thinking back and about, forth. he would go back and forth, and it, I, I just, and he would always make the wrong choice until the end, <laughs> he did become a good guy, and, you know, gave up his life, sacrificed yeah. his life at the end, at the, at the one last Avengers, but um, I just think... You know that's that and then and then we were even happen. talking and we were talking about this too, like our our favorite actors. You know that we that we've seen play both roles. I mean, here is a, a complete opposite. We were talking about right. Larry Hagman, right? Yeah. In I Dream a Genie, he was this real nice guy, you know, and um, you know he was the, the master of the genie, and he did you know was just really nice guy, right? Right. And then later on in the eighties. He became J.R. Ewing, Ewing, right? And, and we was... all wanted we all wanted to see somebody shoot him. <laughs> I mean, it was just like I remember that. I'm like, oh my gosh, why doesn't somebody and I was a little girl. And I'm like, he's so mean. We see and we see shows all the time. I mean, if we we're watching a show and we're like, somebody just needs to take that guy out. Somebody just and in our it, we're Christians. We shouldn't be talking like that. But in our minds, it's like this person is so evil. I wish somebody would just get rid of them. Oh, you know. Just... So here, here's the thing. We apply it to let's let's go come back to reality, and we can think of all these horrible people in the history of our world, and these people who persecuted people, and you know did awful things. Well. My goodness, we can think of Saul, who became Paul, was very charismatic yes. at persecuting Christians, um, murdered Christians, persecuted them, put them, you know, to death, and all these things, hunted them down. And God took that charisma of this persecutor of his people and turned him around. And even to the point of saying, I can use this man. Right. And I, I think that... Um, that that is such a unique story because you know I think that there were people put in um, Saul's life mm -hmm. to try and help him see that Christians and the gospel of Jesus Christ were not bad people I, I think he had many opportunities but I, I do believe that God really created him to do something phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And um, just like David and just like other people in the world, Billy Graham, all that kind of stuff. You mm -hmm. know, he was created that and God stopped him in his tracks and blinded him. Right. And he still, he still could have chose to say no. He still could have chose to say no even when Jesus came to see him personally and said, you know, why are you persecuting me? What is your deal? You know? Um, let's, let's bring it even one step closer to a contemporary story. If some of you uh, are not familiar, look this up. It was called The Cross and the Switchblade with Dave Wilkerson yes. and Nikki Cruz. There's, there is um, a perspective of Dave Wilkerson who wrote Cross and the Switchblade, and then there was a perspective of Nikki Cruz that wrote Run Baby Run. And they were the same story, just different perspectives. So Dave Wilkerson was this pastor that went into uh, inner city New York yes. to, to minister to the gangs. And here's this, you know, this young bi Bible college seminary student with a suit and tie, you know, nice shoes going into the gangs of New York. 
and is going to preach Jesus Christ to them. And you know, have, you have Nikki Cruz, who's this young Hispanic gang leader, and he is like, I hate this man. I hate this man with a passion. And he, and he even, there was a point in this movie where he said, if you tell me about Jesus one more time, I will cut you to pieces. And Dave Wilkerson said, you can cut me to pieces, but every piece will cry that Jesus Christ loves you. And changed the gangs of the, and Nikki Cruz is an evangelist today. Um, you you know about, you know about the, um, uh, what's this, this group it's called, um, gosh, I can't think of it now, it's on the tip of my tongue, but uh, formed this, this boys group, you know, that ministered to these people, and my goodness, Nikki Cruz, who was one of the hardest persons. They send they send a lot of their kids to uh, I can't remember what it's called either. <laughs> that's terrible. Teen Challenge. Yes, Teen that's, Challenge. That's it. Teen Challenge. So many parents send their kids to Teen Teen Challenge. It's, and it's actually for a, it's actually for adult men. It, it yeah. did was it was with teens, but Nikki Cruz and his wife both you know were part of this and they worked together on this thing. And what a tor- hard ministry that they had. So. Coming back around to all these things, we talked about Saul being Paul. We talked about the transformation that God did uh, in the life of Nikki Cruz through Dave Wilkerson. And what a powerful testimony. And here's the point. Why do good things happen to bad people? Let's let's read Romans. Um, I'm going to read my version, which is New King James. I think this is New King James. Um, yes, this is New King James. So, um, And then I'll have Tracy read her version. Uh, of what it says. In verse 28 it says of chapter 8 of Romans, likewise the Spirit also helps, uh, I'm sorry, uh, get it, go forward, I was on 26. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. For whom He foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom He predestined, these He also called whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. You want to read yours? We see the original and intended shape of our lives there in him after God made that decision of what his children should be like. He followed it up by calling people by name. After he called them by name, he set them on a solid basis with himself. And then, after getting them established, he stayed with them to the end, gloriously completing what he had begun. There you go. Jesus loves his creation. Yes. He loves you and I. He created. He loves the worst of the worst. And it's hard, for, it's hard for us because there are people who have been through abuse. There are, there are people who have been through horrible circumstances. And those circumstances were caused by individual people. I mean, you think, my goodness, you think of the Jewish people in the Holocaust and Adolf Hitler and all of his generals and sergeants and, pe- and lieutenants and all these people who were underneath him um, who put to death thousands of Jewish people at Auschwitz and, and other camps and stuff. And these people, they, they, you know they they hated these these Nazis, German Nazis, and for for good reason, right? I mean they killed their parents and their their families and their brothers and their sisters, wives, husbands, all these horrible things. And you know we even talked about um, you know on Sunday we talked about uh, David Meese, who's a Christian musician, and how he grew up in a in a home of abuse. And took him years, even as a Christian musician, to forgive his his father for that abuse. Yeah. And all these things happen to us, and it's hard in our humanness to forgive. We have anger, we have angst, we have this this feeling. I mean, we're going through all these feelings even now with this whole political cycle. And there are people who hate this politician, or they hate this politician because they do things that they don't agree with, or they feel like they've done all these horrible atrocities to people and they just can't get past it. And as Christians, we fall into that too. Like God loves those people. 
God loves you and I. And we do not, you and I, we don't deserve heaven. We don't deserve heaven. But the Bible says that for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed into the image of his son. He pre, what is predestination? Let me read you the definition of predestination real quick. I have it pulled up here on my phone. Um, the divine foreordaining of all that will happen, especially with regard to the salvation of some and not others, it has been particularly associated with the teachings of St. Augustine, you know, that part. But so, it is the foreordaining of knowing what is to be the outcome of our lives. Does that mean that we are, that God has said, Tracy is going to be a Christian, and so I'm going to write her down the book of life. And Dan's, Dan's not going to be a Christian, so I'm going to write him, I'm going to write him off. I'm going to pay attention to him because he's not. Does God know? God knows. God knows, but he's also given us a will and a choice. Right. He's also given us all the will, and God's will will never, will never uh, surpass our will. That is the beautiful thing. God has predestined us for good things, to be conformed into the image of his son. That's, that is the, the end. That is what he wants. That is what he, he wants. He created heaven for us. He did. He did he not created... create hell for us. He created hell for angels. He created hell for Satan and his angels. Unfortunately, through pride and sin, we also accept that. Not, we also accept hell. We will ourselves to well, hell. Well, we choose. We choose. We don't. I don't think we accept it. I don't think anybody accepts that they're going to go to hell. We don't, well, no, I no, don't. that's not, not that's not what I meant. But okay. I, yeah, what? But we do choose. We do choose by how we live our lives, right. and we don't choose Jesus, so we choose hell. Right. God does not predestine us for hell. God has predestined us for good. Moreover, whom He predestined, these He also called. He's called us, and who He called. These he also justifies. He justifies us. He predestines us. He calls us. And he justifies us. And but then still, he glorifies us. Right. Through our will. If we follow him and we, we listen to him and we obey him, these are things that are the natural law and the natural nature of things. If you go against that, it's harder. It's harder to go against that normal flow. Right? Temptation's easy. But being sinful is harder. Does that make sense? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm getting, a little, I'm getting a little deep. She's going to bring me back to my foundation. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Bring me back. Well, I think sin is very easy. I think sin is very easy and it looks fun and it looks good. I don't, I don't see sin as being hard. I see the consequences of sin being hard. Okay. Well, I'll go with that. Yeah, I'll go with that with you. I see. I see that. Um, I. I don't. I've never. I don't ever see sin as being hard. I see turning the other way as being hard. That's hard work. It's hard work because we have a sinful nature. Mm -hmm. Because we we still were born, like you said, to go to heaven. God didn't. He when he. When he brings people into the earth, when you were when you were born, and everything, he doesn't condemn anyone to to a horrible life. He wants good for everyone. But there are, um, I, I believe, I believe with all of my heart that you know this is Satan's domain. I mean, he's roaming the earth to and fro and devouring and and tempting people you know um i hear stories of, of actually personal stories actually it, it it is this is true but if you go back to genesis who did god give authority to over the earth and to the animals and to to all animal kind well Ad abraham or adam, adam he he did, he did. until he was tempted by Satan. Exactly. And that's where Satan comes in because we gave it away. We gave it to Satan. 
we willfully sinned and we gave Satan authority. When you willfully sin in your life, you give authority to Satan. It's funny because I, I've been watching this on YouTube and they're, and they're all making fun of me and I, I don't care. But um, it's like a comic. <laughs> Not all of us. It's like a comic, uh, a comic uh, um, Bible episodes. It's, they have seasons and episodes and everything and they're taking everybody through the Bible. But it's done in um, comic form. Mm-hmm. And um, I was, it was so interesting when I watched the creation one, which was the first episode, and when Satan went to Eve. Satan made it seem like that, um, that, you know, he's like, you know, you're not going to die if you eat from this tree or whatever. Don't you want to be, don't you want to know the same things as God? You know, that's what he made it seem like. It wasn't like they were sinning. You know, he made it seem like. And I watched this episode with you, yeah. Right. He made it seem like, and she's like, well, I want to be like God. Because I feel like when they walked and they talked with God, they had such admiration and such a friendship that they wanted to be like him. And they wanted to know him. And, um... So it was funny how Satan twists that stuff mm-hmm. to make it seem like, well, yeah, why wouldn't I want to know that? You know, why wouldn't I want to be like God? I love him or whatever. And I just thought that just really struck me as he knows what he's doing. And he is really conniving and very smart. And why do you think the Bible tells you that? that he is conniving and he's a snake and he's slippery and he gets into the crevices of people's minds that makes them think that, you know, just like Eve. So you have to really watch and be mindful and ask the Lord to give you discernment on what the trickster is up to. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so we go back to this question, why does God allow good things to happen to bad people? Because he is allowing us, he's giving us opportunity after opportunity to come back to him. His grace overflows in our lives. He doesn't want any of us to, to be lost. But he will allow us to make up our own minds, ultimately. We make yeah. up our own minds. And if you're not for God, you're against God, right? right. And you can do that by the, the choices that you make, the actions that you, that you do, um, the things that you allow yourself to partake in on a daily basis. Don't, don't, you know, I, I think people think that all Christians are poor and, you know, they don't have any money and they're just, they live from paycheck to paycheck. Probably most of us do. But there are a lot of wealthy Christian people out there. I mean, they're, you know, I mean, I don't know what the ratio to people that, are not good and use their money for really nasty stuff but there are really a lot of good very wealthy Christian people that are giving 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 and loving 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 with their with their funds so I don't think God is saying I'm gonna just make these Christians poor and these Christians wealthy and these this this and this this you know, um, well, God has given I, us a group I think of, he balances it out because... Yes. He's given us a group of talents. He's given everybody talents and measures that we can use for his kingdom. If we take those talents and we decide to uh, develop a business or develop wealth, he's going, to, he's going to bless us. We didn't take those talents. We didn't bury them and hide them. We prospered and made them, made them grow. That's prosperity. <clears throat> That's not a prosperity gospel. It's talking about prosperity within the church. And sometimes there are things that God, you know, and can, can a Christian uh, go and get a lottery ticket and win the lottery? Well, anybody can do that. Anybody, God is not going to necessarily, you know, not allow somebody to win well, the lottery. There, there, I mean, okay, so there are a lot of people that inherit wealth. We have a lot of people that inherit all that stuff. You yeah, know, that happens I mean, too. Mm-hmm. That happens. Um, you know, the royal, the royals inherit wealth. I mean, they don't 
Right. You know, but they have a choice to make on what they want to do with that. You know, do they want to just go out and have fun? And so does everyone. Everyone has a choice of how they invest what God gives them. Yeah. You know, I I do believe that that is is so true, and that you really have to watch. You know, it. It is so hard to do the right things when you want to invest in, you know, why, why would people, why would people invest in pornography? Right. Well, it's the a damage, very, the damage that that causes. But it's a very, it's a very lucrative, it's a very lucrative business. It and is. people don't, and, and that's where the sinful nature of man comes in is that their end justifies their means. They don't. They don't care about the damage. And with the drug cartels, you know, the drug market and all these things as well, it they they're not thinking about, or maybe they are, uh, about the damage that is causing the collateral damage that's causing initially by destroying homes and families. They're just thinking about the wealth and what it's going to mean to for well, the well. And lives. they also can flip it around. Here's what also evilness and things like this can do. They can flip it around and send a whole bunch of money to a hospital as yeah. a gift and do a whole bunch of good. There are some, I mean, you know, you hear stories or you even see stories on TV of where this guy is so bad and then he gives a hundred thousand dollars to some charity. And yes, He's giving it for a tax write-off or he's doing it to help him in whatever way. But it does help all these people, you right. know, that might have cancer or whatever, you know, whatever this hospital needs. I'm just giving you an example. I'm not saying that, oh, well, then this great guy's a great person or this person is a great... No, he's still evil. But there are things sometimes... That people, you know, you know, and people think, well, why would God allow somebody like that to keep prospering, and why would God allow that person to um, keep getting away with the evil deeds that they're doing? We don't know. We don't know what God is doing in that person's life. We don't know the steps that He's taking. And yes, like I said, the collateral damage sometimes are things that affect us personally, affect our families, affect innocent people innocent lives God is not the creator of bad things he's good he he, he God is God is good right and mm -hmm. so God is light in a dark world where there is darkness um, darkness is just the absence of light right so if I was if I was an evil bad person which I have done my share of you know sins or whatever <laughs> if I was an evil, bad person, wouldn't I want as many chances to get myself straightened out as what a good person gets? And many evil people have. Many evil people have they come still, to a place with God where they said, I should be dead in a gutter somewhere. I should have been put in prison, locked away, the key thrown away. And that's what I deserve. But God gave them a chance. God gave them opportunities. Because only God knows what that person's life has a potential for. I, I, I'm telling you right now, um, if you think that evil people are getting away with everything, they're not. They're not. They will pay the piper someday. All they those will, things come to light. They will all come to light. They will all get their due. It might not be till the end of their lifetime or uh, judgment seat of God or whatever. But let me just tell you, I, I would rather suffer some down here and not be a rich person, be a Christian and live the right way and make the right choices and my reward would be heaven mm -hmm. than live a really fun, great, rich, fancy, have everything and be evil, nasty, mean and all of that kind of stuff and go to hell. But I as mean, Christians we're like, 
God, why why can't we have some of that stuff? <laughs> why can't we have some of that that good? You know, but I'll tell you what. Let me tell you this: is that as bad as what hell is, heaven is so much greater. Anything that you could imagine that you have ever enjoyed here on this earth, heaven is going to be that much better. So don't put your things in. Don't put your trust and your your belief and everything in things that are going to disappear and your wealth and everything because your reward is in heaven and someday that reward is going to be so much greater and people don't understand that i get so sad like um so one time we were we were uh i can't remember i think it was your grandma that passed away and we went oops and we went back to, sorry, my microphone kind of fell. We went back to, Dan and I went back to get the flowers for everybody and bring them out to where we were all having, uh, where we were all having dinner or whatever. And we went into the funeral home and they were playing like ACDC and all this kind of stuff. And I just thought, oh my gosh, I just figured when people, um, pass away that they have nice calm music and they have stories and it really opened my eyes up to how um, how people have you know they hell's bells and all this kind of stuff and that they think honestly that they really think well if I go to hell it's going to be one heck of a party you know and I think that they think that that's what hell is going to be like. It's going to be, well, we can do drugs and we can do, we can have all the women. We can have all this great stuff that we've experienced on earth. And that's what hell is going to be like. So why wouldn't I want to go down there? I can do drugs and not get punished for it or whatever. I mean, they think that that's what hell is going to be like. And I just am like, these poor people, they have no clue and the guy that was buried with his Harley Davidson I am just like really yeah, dude buried a really nice bike <laughs> nobody, nobody can see well he was rich and he he <laughs> paid for a huge humongous plot and all that kind of stuff to be buried with his with mm-hmm. his Harley Davidson and stuff like that and he wanted to go out like that and I I just think you still can't take it with you. Do you understand that? I mean, he, do you, it's like, just cause you're buried with the stupid motorcycle, does it mean that you're taking it with you? No. There is a, there is another life beyond this life. Yeah. So, I mean, as we wrap up tonight, um, the whole idea behind, you know, this subject tonight was talking about how, you know, we get frustrated because we don't see we always think that bad people right. are, are the... They always get blessed with stuff, yes, you know. Yes, they always, they're rich and they but just... But you know what? Your your job as a Christian is to pray for those people. And God is, is doing something in their lives that maybe you don't understand. And it comes down to even small levels. It might be your employer. Or it might be the guy that just cut you off, you know, on the road or whatever. And our first response is like, man, that guy's a jerk. And, you know... Pray for those people. God loves them. God has a plan for their life. It says in the in the Word of God to pray for your enemies, and let me tell you, that is super super hard. Yeah. Every, might, everybody has somebody in their life that has done wrong, or you might see them has, in heaven someday. <laughs> and you will. <laughs> and you know what? You know what? I think about that, and I think they're going to be perfect. I'm going to be perfect. And we're not going to think of each other as those people anymore. We're going to see each other in a different light. And I'm, I, I'm really excited for that because um, I, I kind of look forward to seeing them in heaven and seeing what God really <laughs> made them to be like. You know what I mean? We, we what, all, like he, like he yeah. really designed and they're, per, they're perfect. And so I think that is going to be... Yeah. It's like you're going to be meeting that person the first time, yeah. you know? I mean, that's what I think, but 
I'm just me. Yeah, why don't you say a prayer for us and we'll end. Okay. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for tonight and we just thank you for this time to and this opportunity to be on YouTube and and to be on Facebook and we just ask your um, blessings on whoever watches this tonight and Lord, we know that you have plans for each person's life out there, plans for good, not evil. You just are a God of good, not evil and we just, you know, we can think of so many people that are people that have hurt us in our life and we just think they just keep getting away with this and they just keep why do people why do bad people still prosper and still and help us to understand that these are people that you love to and that you have created and designed to live here on earth now whether they choose to recognize that you are God and that you love them and that they need to walk with you that is up to them but I ask you know help us to help us to step back and and look at them maybe in a different light or pray for them like Dan said help us to just we need to pray for our enemies we need to pray for the people that rub us the wrong way um, you know I just I think of so many stories where your grace has come in and forgiveness has come in. So, Lord, I just, I pray for all those people tonight that you know, we have a hard time with. Lord, we know that you love them and we know that you have a plan for them. Um, please help us to realize that you have everything under control and that yes. we are not God. That we are not to judge and we are not... We are just to be people that pray for them and, um, you know, try to understand or, what, or whatever. But God, you just help us to uh, intervene and do your will. And we thank you and we bless your holy name tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us. We hope you have a great evening and we look forward to seeing you next week back here at the living room life center yeah don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell <laughs> all right see you guys next week bye, bye.